Okay, so today's session is of massage ball or trigger point um, work and I've got a little array of um, selection of balls here. Um, so just to give you a heads up, often the easiest one that you can find around your house sometimes is tennis balls and they've got a bit of a give so they're quite nice and soft and quite a nice easy one to start with. And there's also the spiky balls which some people love, some people not such a fan. With the spiky balls you've got different levels of spike, this one has a bit of a give this one not so much, so you need two of the same. Um, there's not massive differences in all of them, what they achieve. It is a bit more down to personal preference. Um, some of them, the spiky ones are a bit like rock. Um, some people love that. Um, the spiky ones are quite good for the kind of just improving surface level blood flow and so on. But to be honest, they all do a similar sort of work. Um, you can get different sizes of the spiky balls, the beast. Um, little tiny one, um, big one's quite useful for the kind of big muscle groups, um, quads, hamstrings, glutes, so on, little ones for kind of getting in there and kind of the shoulder blades and um, feet and so on. And so they're good for like different things. Um, and then of course is the good old friend the roller and I will be doing a session specifically on that. Um, but again, similar sort of thing that we're trying to achieve um, with a bit of muscle release. So, you need two of the same balls. My personal preference is lacrosse balls. Um, they, I think they have a sort of similar um, pressure to almost someone's thumb in a sports massage, or someone's kind of, there's a tiny bit of give, but there's quite a lot of pressure that they can inflict. Um, so these are lacrosse balls, they, they're pretty bouncy. Um, online, they can be called true point balls, um, massage balls, um, lacrosse balls and they're obviously the same size pretty much more or less as tennis balls so that's kind of ideally what we want today and i think they're roughly eight centimeters um so grab hold of two balls and ideally it's good to have two because you can kind of use them in symmetrical places in the body so you're going to start coming up into standing placing one ball to start with underneath the foot and you're going to gently press down, apply a bit of pressure to the ball, rolling the foot all the way from front to the back and release. So from the side you're pressing down hard-ish, as hard as you want, just going in one direction and loosen off. Pressing down, release, press down, release. I'm going to do that just a few times. Again you can press as hard or as light as you like. You do a lot of walking, uh, many amounts of running or exercise. It's a lovely one just to keep the feet nice and mobile. Often we don't ever really stretch our feet, ever. And it's good to just do it in one direction as you're kind of just promoting any excess fluids back into the general circulation, rolling from front to back. And down the mid of the foot might be a little bit tender as well, that's quite normal. And then on your next one, just bring the ball under the arch of your foot and just gently have a little rock out forwards, backwards, shimmy. Again, might be a little bit painful so you can ease off. So this little sequence is only going to be really short. You could do it at the beginning of the day or the end of the day if you had a long day. Um, a bit like your own sort of personal sports massage. Or you can remember any of these exercises and just do it with you often going on holiday if you're going on a more active holiday taking a little ball or set of balls is really useful okay on your next one i want you to bring the ball just into the front of a further bit of trigger point work i want you to press down so in the ball of the foot where the fleshy part is pressing down and then to the mid part of the foot or the arch this is the ouchy bit Again, press down, you can press as hard or as light as you like. Pressing down. And then into the heel, just press down. That one's usually okay. Good. And then gently releasing, nice and lightly on the ball, forwards, backwards generating a little bit of heat under the feet. Loosen off. And then just place the foot down for a moment. And as a bit of a 
control measure to see what it feels like compared to the other foot. Usually it feels nice and sort of flexible, nice and light compared to the other foot. Might even still feel a little bit painful, <laughs> but that's okay. We're gonna do the same little combination on the other side. So pressing down, rolling from the front to the back of the foot, rolling from the ball to the heel. You can do this in sitting, but it is quite good in standing because you can apply more of your body weight. And then bring the ball under the arch of your foot, press down a little shimmy forwards and backwards. into that fleshy part, pressing down. And then under the midfoot or the arch, again press down, that's usually when most people find it very tender. usually for as long as you like um, it's completely up to you if you get quite a bit of pain through the feet maybe start with a softer ball to start with like tennis ball and with a bit more give and then nice and lightly just roll out through the ball and then gently releasing okay bring yourself down onto the mat so another one to kind of complement working through the sole of the foot is the calf. Often the calves can be really tight um, and you might have heard of something called plantar fasciitis, um, just inflamed tendons in the feet. So often um, loosening off the sole of the feet or particularly loosening off the calf is a really good one. Again, you just need one ball, placing it underneath the calf. You can either just shimmy with the calf side to side or if you can, taking the weight in this leg, in the arms, see if you can roll forwards and backwards, try and almost point the foot, try and relax the leg, forwards and backwards, you might find a few spots that are a little bit painful, try and press in and hold or apply a bit of pressure, you can really push the leg down on the ball if you want to, try and get around the sides as well, high and low, that feels too much on the wrist, taking the body weight again, you can achieve the same from the floor. Again, you might find sort of bobbly bits where you think, oh, you sort of just roll over them. It's quite painful. And then releasing, swapping over. So again, we're sort of flying through these just to show you and it's good to sort of just this is a bit of a quick body blitz everywhere with the massage balls but you can spend a bit longer on them if you want so same thing you can lift the body weight forwards backwards try and point the foot try and press the weight down through the ball as well as spending hours and hours stretching using the massage balls are pretty good for that. Okay, releasing off. Next few, we're gonna work up from our glutes all the way up to the shoulders, and then we'll finish there, so working towards our head. So glutes are really key. Again, this one can be really painful. A lot of my clients call it trauma class whenever I bring in um, the balls, um, <laughs> but it is good for them. I reassure them that it is doing them good, it's not just for my entertainment, you do get plenty of good sound effects. 
Now sometimes it's quite nice to use a head cushion just to make life a little bit more comfortable. Um, and I want you to bring yourself down onto your back and with the balls placing one under either bottom cheek. Again, it's not a right or wrong position, but try to go either in the middle of the muscle belly or a little bit higher, okay? We're aiming sort of for a piriformis or glute need. You have jeans on where your back pocket would be, okay? Not necessarily a right or wrong position. Relaxing the shoulders. And then all I want you to do is gently tilt one knee to the side, back and the other to the side. Now, if this is really excruciating, I want you to stay at this level, okay? We're gonna work upwards, it's gonna get a little bit more painful. But if you've got really tight glutes, this will be painful. Try and relax on the balls if you can. Just like going for a sports massage, if you went for a sports massage all tensed up, I think the masseuse would have plenty to say. So from here, coming to the center, Bring the feet and knees together and see if you can drop both knees side to side. Okay, this is quite a painful one, but it's a nice one to loosen off the glutes. And then coming back to the center, adjust the position of the balls if you need to. You're going to float one leg up and back down, floating the other leg up and back down. the shoulders, rest of the body nice and relaxed. And then if that feels okay, I want you to lift one leg, lift the other, and either come back into single leg work. Now this is quite a big jump up. It's a bit of a challenge for the abdominals as well, but there's a lot of weight going down to the balls. Either one leg side to side, or both knees side to side. So if you can't quite see what I'm doing, I'm gonna show you this way as well. Here, either here or here. Okay, if it feels too much, stay at that lower level on the floor with the knees side to side. Keep trying to relax on the balls. If it's too excruciating, again, you can tone it down by using a tennis ball or a slightly softer ball to start with. And often having really tight glutes can have an impact on the lower back, can be pulling there. So this is a really beneficial one to do. On your next one, whether your legs are down or in tabletop, I want you to cross one leg over, coming into that piriformis stretch, which you may have done before. You can either press that knee away, hold, or if you want to deepen the stretch, grab hold of the leg on the floor, Pull it in towards you. You can either stay still or do a bit of rock side to side. That one's, that's a good one. And then releasing. So again, we're flying through these, but you can spend a lot longer if it's really painful. Maybe do it a little bit more often or spend a bit longer on the glute series. Other side, cross the leg over, either pushing it away, or grab hold of the leg on the floor. Put it in, staying still, or gently rocking side to side. And then releasing. Okay, we're gonna move upwards with the balls, aiming at the lower back area this time. So have the balls almost touching. You can always get a sock and put the two balls in a sock so they're kept together. Keep them next to one another, straddling the spine either side, not too low, because that's where the pelvis is, and you don't wanna to go too wide, it's just uncomfortable. So you can come down, resting down. Again, you can use a head cushion if you want to, and either, Staying there, just resting, letting the balls press in for a moment. Readjust the position if they need, make sure they're symmetrical next to one another. A bit like you did before, dropping the knees either one at a time or 
both. So the balls just gently press in to the lower back. And that's got a nice one. You can begin as you come back to the center by just gently lifting the bottom and relaxing. So you're just tilting the pelvis up and back down. So you're pressing the weight down onto the balls. Tilting up, pressing the weight. Good, last couple. And then releasing. Coming up onto the forearms. From here, you can hover the bottom, you can adjust the positions of the ball, move them slightly higher if you want, make sure they're symmetrical. Hover the bottom, roll gently forwards and backwards. So you control the weight of your body through the elbows and the feet. You can always carry on, but you can always do it also against a wall. Placing the balls in the same place. Again, you can push your weight down against the wall. Any of the next few, you can do against a wall. It's quite a nice one, actually, if you're not all of your body weight on it. And then, checking this, just checking out. That's a blue mark on the wall. <laughs> and on your next one, we're going to move upwards again. So we're going to aim between the shoulder blades. That kind of area where we can see where the shoulder blades sort of flare out. Often we can get quite a lot of knots there. Things can get quite tight and sticky around the shoulder blades. Now the higher you put the balls, the more comfortable they will be. Sometimes it's quite hard to get the right position of the balls. And this is often the main kind of placement that people don't always get it right. If you have the balls too low, there's nothing necessarily wrong in that. It's just gonna be really uncomfy on the rib cage. So we want them right near the top. Okay, you can either pop the balls down, bring yourself down, or if you've got the flexibility, you can place the balls up between the shoulder blades. So the higher you go, the more comfortable it will be. So I'm gonna show you on the floor and then I'll show you against the wall. Again, using the head cushion, so your head's not tilted all the way back. And we just start with the arms above the head. Just going to reach the arms away so you feel the shoulder blades spread apart and back down. So often people find this one a real painful one. Reaching up and back down. Keeping going. Again, you've got the option of being against the wall. Placing the ball right at the top. Pressing in, and you can do any of those same ones. Against the wall, you can roll around. From the floor, if you're down here, this time, I want you to see if you can give your arms a hug round. You can do it in standing as well. Wrap the arms around, just exposing the shoulder blades. it over so you expose one side a little bit more than the other and then the balls press in and you can do the same thing in standing and then other side Gently circle the arms. Bring a bit of movement around through the shoulder blades. So you can do any amount of arm movements. Really, you can sway the arms, you can take the arms wide and hold, and so on. Okay, so we're going to move ourselves upwards. 
best one of all, which most people find they like, is just right in the shoulder, so at the base of the neck. If someone was to give you a shoulder rub, it would be very nice, yes please. Um, but it would also, this is where the balls are going to be positioned, okay, right in that place. So I would suggest coming down, you don't have to use a head block or a head cushion, you can just keep the head on the floor, pop the balls underneath, in fact I'm going to get rid of mine for a moment. And then even just resting there naturally presses in on one of the key areas that we carry a lot of tension. But bring the arms up, I want you to send one arm back circle round, other arm, circle round. Again, there's not a right or wrong position, find a position that's comfortable for you, not on bone, not on your scapula, in that nice fleshy part, and you're just circling the arms. next to the ears, reach the arms away, that's quite a nice one, just holding there, or coming up and down. So if you find you get neck problems or shoulder problems, this is a lovely one to start with, to loosen through any tension. And then if you want to, you can begin to come up into a shoulder bridge as you lift and hover the bottom, or you can come all the way up, you're just pressing the weight down onto those balls, you can come up and down, or you can come up, stay up, and again you can combine with any and I'm just sort of arm wiggles as well, circling the arms, sending them round. Bring the arms across, it's got a nice one, just holding. If it feels too much with the hips off, place them on. Just hold, even just shrugging the shoulders. It's just a nice one. Again, you can adjust the position the further you push them down, the more work they'll be doing. Just spending a couple more moments here. And then gently releasing, just taking the balls out underneath the shoulders and they should feel nice and sort of loosened off. Roll onto your side, come up into sitting, bring yourself round. So we're basically there, um, that's just a quick little summary of how you can use the balls. You can obviously try and use them on the quads, um, on the hamstrings, but often the sort of slightly bigger balls or the foam roller is better for that as well. Um, so well done, keep practicing and playing around um, with the massage balls, there's lots you can do with them, um, lots of different positions. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the foam roller um, where we'll spend a bit more time with sort of bigger muscle groups. So well done, good work. Hope you feel nice and a bit more mobilised. Good work.